Good morning. Uh, today we will talk about population topic. Uh, first, uh, definition of population structure. In population structure, we have age structure and sex structure. For age structure, age structure we classify population according to age to three groups. Again, age structure we classify population according to age to three groups. So, age structure refers to the number of people in each age group of population. Age structure refer to the number of people in each age group of population. We classify population into three groups. First group is children, children from 0 to 20 years. Second group, working age population. Working age population from 20 to 60 years and sometimes from 10 to 70 years. Third group, old or retired people who are over 60 years. So, population structure, we have age structure and sex structure. Age structure refer to the number of people in each age group of population. We classify population into three groups according to age. First group is the base of the parent, which include children or people below the school living age from 0 to 20 years. Again, first group of population, the base of the pyramid includes children or people below the school living age from 0 to 20 years. Second group, center of the pyramid represent the working age group. Working age group from school living age till the retirement age. So from 20 years to 60 years. Again, center, second group is the center of the pyramid, which represent working age group. Working age group from school living age till retirement age. From 20 to 60 years. Third group, top of the pyramid, which include old or retired people, usually above 60 years. So, we classified population according to age into three groups. First group, children, children from 0 to 20 years. Second group, working age population, working age population from 20 to 60 years. Third group, or the top of the pyramid, which include old and retired people who are usually over 60 years. So, age structure, we classify the population according to age into three groups. Second in population structure, sex structure. Sex structure refers to the number or percentage of male relative to the number of female in population. So, sex structure, we classified population to males and females. In our study of population structure, we have to discuss some main definitions, some main concepts. Working age population, labor force, dependence ratio, expectancy lives, and aging population. So, in population structure, we have age structure and sex structure. In age structure, we classify population according to age into three groups. First, children from 0 to 20 years, second group working age population, working age population from 20 to 60 years, third group old or retired people who are over 60 years. 
second in population structure we have six structures in six structures we classify population into males and females so we have to discuss some main concepts some definitions related to population so first concept is working age population what we mean by working age population potential labor force of a country includes all persons from 10 years to 70 years again working age population included all persons in the country from 10 years to 70 years second concept or second definition working population labor force this includes all peoples able willing and seeking or searching for a work so we have three requirements to consider as working population as a labor force he must be well willing to work able to work and searching for a work so this means that not all working age population included in the working population for example full-time students full-time students considered as working age population over 10 years then considered as a working age population but not willing to work so it's not included in the working population not included in the labor force another example we have housewives housewives included according to age to working age population but not willing to work not seeking for a work so it included in working age population but not included in working population so working age population is the potential labor supply of, of a country includes all persons from 10 to 70 years working population just apart from working age population working population or labor force include people who are able willing and seeking or searching for a work the dependent population and dependence ratio all groups of people who are not included in the labor force are called dependent population for example children full-time students housewives old or retired people all are considered as dependent population so the dependence ratio is the ratio between non-working population and working population again dependence ratio ratio between non-working population non-working population can be children full-time students housewives or old and retired people and working population so dependence ratio is the ratio between non-working population and working population the expectance life the expectance life the expected is the expected number of years that an individual is supposed to live again the expectance life is the expected number of years that individual is supposed to live the expectance life for a person is high in developed countries than in developing countries due to better medical services again the expectance life expected number of years that individual is supposed to live the expectance life for a person is high in developed countries than in developing countries this is due to better medical service aging population a population where the average age is high this is one of the demographic 
aspects of the developed countries. We find in developed countries that both first rate and this rate are relatively low. Again, aging population, population where the average age is high. This is one of the demographic aspects of the developed countries, where both birth rates and death rates are relatively low. This is the main concept or the main definitions related to population structure. As we said, population structure can be age structure or sex structure. For age structures, we classify population according to age into three groups. First group is children. In children from zero to 20 years. Second group, working age population. Working age population from 20 to 60 years. Third group, old or retired people. Old or retired people over 60 years. <coughs> Second, sex structure. Sex structures, we classify population to males and females. Okay? Then, we have to discuss the main series of population. We actually will discuss two series. First series is multi population series, and second series will be the optimum population size series. First, multi population series. In multi population series, multi explain the relationship between population size and resources. This series explains the relationship between population size and the available resources. In this series, Maltz believed that population size increase at a geometrical progression. What we mean by geometrical progression? Geometrical progression means to double. Double from 2 to 4, from 4 to 8, from 8 to 16, 16 to 32, while resources increase at a mathematical progression. Mathematical progression, which means at a fixed rate, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Again, in this theory, Maltes believed that population size increases at a geometrical progression, while resources increase at a mathematical progression. Geometrical progression means that the number of people doubles every period, which means 2 million people after 20 years will be doubled to 4 million. The 4 million after 20 years will double to 8 million. So, population increase at geometrical progression. Geometrical progression means to double. On the other hand, mathematical progression indicates that resources increase at a fixed rate, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. So, Maltz believed that population increase at geometrical progression, which means double, while resources increase at a mathematical progression, which means at a fixed rate. This means that population increase faster than the increase in resources. Again, this means that population increase faster than the increase in resources according to Maltes theory. So, this creates a problem as the population size is increasing much faster than the amount of resources. And a point will be reached where the number of resources will not be sufficient for the number of people. So, according to Maltes theory, Maltes believed that population increase at geometrical progression. Geometrical means double. 
Why? Resources increase at a mathematical progression. Mathematical progression, which means at a fixed rate. Fixed rate, 2, 4, 6, 8. So, according to Malthus, increase in population much faster than the increase in resources. Till reach a point that resources insufficient the number of people. In this point, according to Malthus, to achieve the point of equilibrium between resources and population, to reach balance between resources and population, we have two factors. Malthus believed that the equilibrium between the population and the resources have to be reached by two factors. First, positive checks. Positive checks, the balance between population and resources will be restored when there is an increase in death rate. Increase in death rate due to wars, starvation, disease, and sickness. So, according to Malthus, to achieve equilibrium between population and resources, to achieve balance between population and resources, we have two factors. First, positive checks. Positive checks to reach the balance between population and resources by increased death rate. Increased death rate due to wars and starvation. Wars because resources insufficient the number of people. Second fact, preventive checks. In preventive checks, decrease the death rate. Decrease the death rate by postpone or cancel marriage. Again, preventive checks to decrease the birth rate by postpone or cancel marriage. So, Malt theory explains the relationship between population and available resources. According to Malto theory, population increase at a geometrical progression. Geometrical progression, which means to double. From 2 to 4, from 4 to 8, from 8 to 16, 16 to 32. Why resources increase at a mathematical progression? Mathematical progression means at a fixed rate. 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. According to Malthus, to reach the balance between resources and population, to reach equilibrium between population and resources, we have two factors. First factor, positive checks. Positive checks to increase the death rate. Increase the death rate through wars and starvation. Second factor, Preventive checks. In preventive checks, decrease birth rate by postpone or cancel marriage. Comment on the Maltese population theory. First, the model is one-sided since it focuses on how to control the population size and ignore the resource side. Maltese theory explains the relationship between resources and population. But in this model, it neglects the resource side. And all the solution was about population side. So, the first comment on Malt's population theory, the model is one-sided since it focuses on how to control the population size and ignore the resource side. Second comment, the recommendations provided by Malthus concerning the postpone and cancel marriage are unrealistic. Solution to cancel or postpone ma marriage, unrealistic solution. Third comment on Malthus theory, the model neglects the rule of technological progress in discovering new resources 
and in improving the quality of existing resources. The modern Maltese theory neglects the role of technological progress in discovering new resources and in improving the quality of existing resources. Also, the model cannot be generally applied all over the world, as developed countries didn't face this problem at all. Pro this problem means overpopulation problem. The model or multi theory focused on overpopulation problem only. The model could only be applicable to some developing countries facing overpopulation. As we know that we have overpopulation and underpopulation. Overpopulation means that population is greater than resources. Again, overpopulation means that population is greater than resources. While underpopulation, resources is greater than population. So, Malt theory focused only on overpopulation problem and neglect underpopulation problem. So, Malt theory explain the relationship between resources and population. According to Malt theory, Malt theory <coughs> believed that population increase at a geometrical progression. Geometrical progression, which means double, from 0, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. While resources increase at a mathematical progression, mathematical progression, which means at a fixed rate, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So, population increase faster than the increase in resources. Tell reach point that population in sorry resources insufficient number of people. In this point, to reach the equilibrium between population and resources, to reach balance between resources and population, we have two factors <coughs> according to Malt theory. First factor positive checks. Positive checks increase the strength through wars and starvation. Second factor, preventive checks. To reduce birth rate. Reduce the birth rate by postpone or cancel marriage. Comment on multi theory. Number one, the model or multi theory ignored resources side. We have population side and resources side. All solution was related to population side and ignored resources side. Second, the model neglect the rule of technological progress in discovering new resources and improving the quality of existing resources. Also, solutions according to multi theory to postpone or cancel marriage unrealistic solution. Also, the, ma the model cannot be generally applied all over the world. The model could only be applicable to some developing countries facing overpopulation problem. Second theory is the optimum population size theory. In optimum population size theory, they classified countries to underpopulated countries and overpopulated countries. Underpopulated countries where resources is greater than population. For underpopulated countries, increase in population will increase production. Increase in production will increase per capita income. Again, in overpopulation countries, Population is less than resources. In this area, in underpopulation countries, increase in population will increase production. And increased production will increase per capita income. 
till reach point M. Point M maximum per capita income. After this point, which called the optimum population size point, point M, which reach maximum per capita income, after this point, the country will suffer from overpopulation problem. In overpopulation countries, increase in population will decrease per capita income. Underpopulation refers to having more resources than people. In this case, increase in population indicates more production and as a result will increase per capita income. So, in underpopulation countries where resources is greater than population, increase in population will increase production. And increased production will increase per capita income. On the other hand, overpopulation refers to having more resources than more people than resources. In this case, an increase in population decrease per capita income. The optimum population size is a point where the per capita income will be maximum. Maximum per capita income. So, according to optimum population size theory, classified countries to underpopulation countries and overpopulation countries. In underpopulation means that having more resources than people. So increase in population will increase production. And increase in production will increase per capita income. Till reach point M. Point M maximum per capita income. This point called optimum population size. On the other hand, overpopulation countries mean that we have more resources, more people than resources. So increase in population will decrease per capita income. Comment on optimum population size theory. First, this theory is more realistic than multi theory. Countries classified as either or underpopulated or overpopulated. Underpopulated countries need to encourage birth rate, while overpopulated countries need to reduce birth rate. So, <clears throat> this theory is more realistic than multi theory. In this theory, classified countries to underpopulated and overpopulated. Underpopulated must increase per street, while overpopulated countries need to reduce per street. While in multi theory, multi theory explain overpopulation countries only. But in optimum population size, classified countries to underpopulated and overpopulated countries. Second comment on the optimum population size theory, practically speaking, one cannot specify the optimum population size. This is because first, resources are changing and dynamic. Second, it's not about the quantity of people, but the quality of people. So to specify the point of optimum population size is very difficult. Why? Because resources are changing, resources dynamic, and it's not about the quantity of people but the quality of people. So, according to optimal population size, optimal population size classified countries to underpopulated and overpopulated countries. Underpopulated countries, resources is more than population. So, increase in population will increase production. Increased production will increase per capita income. Till reach point M, point M maximum per capita income. Maximum per capita income 
is the optimum population size point. After this point, point M, the country will suffer from overpopulation problem. Overpopulation means that population is greater than resources. So, increase in population will decrease per capita income. Comment on optimal population size theory. This theory is more realistic than multi theory. Countries classified as either underpopulated or overpopulated. Underpopulated countries need to increase per strict, while overpopulated countries need to reduce per strict. Second, practically speaking, to specify optimal population size point is very difficult because resources are changing and dynamic and also it's not about the quantity of people but the quality of people. So for the labor supply, labor supply size is determined by the following factors, by the size of population and the structure of population. As we said, before structure of population can be age structure or sex structure social factors like educational pattern and the willingness of women to work outside the home also affected the labor size supply size okay the labor supply size is determined by the following factors the size of the population, the population growth rate, second, the structure of population, age structure and sex structure, social factors like educational pattern and the willingness of women to work outside the home. The rapid population growth coupled with lack of resources needed to develop the education system and to improve the quality of educational services results that labor supply don't match the need of the labor market. We have this match between labor supply and labor market. For the labor demand, the main factors affecting labor demand, the demand for the products itself. The demand for labor is according to demand of the products. If consumers want more of a particular good or services, more firms will want the workers that make the product. So the demand for labor is from the demand for the product itself. Also, the wage rate will affect the labor demand. The higher the wage rate, the lower the demand for labor. At higher wages, firms will look for us to substitute capital for labor. Third factor affecting labor demand is productivity of labor. Productivity of labor, productivity means output per workers and if workers are more productive, they will be in greater demand. The more the productivity of labor, the more the demand for labor. Productivity is affected by skill levels, education, use of technology and training. So the increase in productivity will increase the demand for labor. So supply of demand and supply of labor and demand of labor will determine the wages and also will determine the level of unemployment. Unemployment happens when individuals who are able, willing and seeking for a work but unable to find a job. Again, unemployment happens when individuals who are able, want and searching for a job but unable to find job. Types of unemployment. We have different types of unemployment. 
First, cycle unemployment. Cycle unemployment happens when individuals lose their jobs as a result of downturn in aggregate demand. Cycle unemployment happens when decrease the total demand, the aggregate demand. Second, structured unemployment. Structured unemployment happens when certain industries decline because of long-term changes in market conditions. Structured unemployment happen when certain industries decline because of long-term changes in market conditions. Also, we have fractional unemployment. Fractional unemployment happen when workers lose their, their current job and are in the process of finding another one. So, fraction unemployment happen when workers lose their current job and in the process of searching for another job. We have also technological unemployment. Technological unemployment happens as a result from the introduction of new techniques on large scale. The replacement, for example, the replacement of workers by machines. Again, technological unemployment, the replacement of workers by machine. So, technological unemployment is a result from the introduction of new techniques on a large scale. Also, we have seasonable unemployment. Happens because certain industries only produce or distribute their products at certain times of the year. Again, it's happen because certain industries only produce or distribute their products at a certain times of the year. For example, ice cream factories. Ice cream factories will have high demand on summer. But in winter, the product demand will decline. Voluntary unemployment. Voluntary unemployment is defined as a situation when workers choose not to work at the current equilibrium wage rate. For one reason or another, workers may select not to participate in the labor market. Okay?